So this little guy right here has actually saved quite a lot of lives over the years. This is a ground fault circuit interrupter, GFCI outlet. And if you're somebody that comes home a lot, piss drunk, stands in their own puddle of pee and sticks things into the outlet and gets electrocuted, you might want to learn about GFCI outlets. So let's start with the basics and then I'll explain absolutely everything you need to know about this amazing piece of technology. So first things first, what the heck is a GFCI outlet? It's basically a type of electrical outlet that's designed to protect people from electrical shock. So for instance, it can quickly shut off power to the outlet if it detects a ground fault. A ground fault is usually when electricity is flowing along an unintended path, such as through water or a person. Here's how the GFCI outlet works. This GFCI outlet continuously monitors the amount of electricity flowing in the circuit. What does it mean? It means that it compares the current entering the circuit on the hot wire side. So if I flip this over, you'll see that over here it says hot. And typically the hot side is with a terminal screw that is either brass, gold, or black. You can see over here it says line and we'll discuss the difference between the line and the load. You could see that there's tape over the load. We'll explain why that's the case in a GFCI outlet when it comes out of the box in a bit. The hot side is the power from that service panel to the GFCI. So in very, very simple terms, the way it works is this is the hot side. So this is the part where the power from the service panel or breaker panel or fuse box is going to this GFCI outlet. What I want to point out here is that the power that's coming in from your service panel, it is then coming out of here. And this would be the neutral side. So again, hot side, neutral side. So what happens? Power comes in here. You have something plugged in. It goes through that, comes out of the neutral side. Now, the brilliance of this is that at all times it is comparing the current entering the circuit. So again, on the hot side and the current leaving it, the neutral side. Normally, these currents should be equal. So something going from the hot wire to the neutral wire, if this is 15 amp and you're receiving 15 amps in the hot side, and then 15 amps are leaving on the neutral side, then you know that it's not going through someone. It's not going through water or a person. However, if there is an imbalance, even as small as four to five milliamps, it indicates that some of the current is flowing through an unintended path, such as through water or a human body. This is called a ground fault. What happens? Well, there's a quick shutoff. When a ground fault is detected, the GFCI outlet cuts off the power to the outlet within milliseconds, preventing electrical shock. These type of GFCI outlets are required in bathrooms, kitchens, laundry rooms, garages, basements, outdoor outlets. And if you know anything about the National Electrical Code, the NEC, they are time and time again expanding where they are requiring these GFCI outlets. Now let's talk about some of the specs of this outlet. First things first, you can see that this looks a little bit funny right here. It almost looks like a sideways T, right? And if you look at other outlets, they might just be straight lines up and down. The reason you're seeing this is because this is a 20 amp outlet. So that T shape that you see in a 20 amp outlet is there to accommodate plugs with a horizontal prong, which is a feature of 20 amp plugs. The whole point of this design is to prevent you from plugging a 20 amp appliance into a 15 amp outlet, which could be unsafe. So the T-shape is basically just a clever safety feature to ensure that only the correct plugs fit into the corresponding outlets. And it's always super important to check the specs of your outlet 
by looking at the actual outlet, not just the box, because sometimes people put the wrong things in a box or they return things, the store sells it again, and you want to make sure that you're actually reading it on the outlet itself. It will state whether it's 20 amp or 15 amp. And remember, you always want to check your breaker and see if you are replacing, if you're a DIYer, you want to make sure that if the breaker is 15 amp, then you are using a 15 amp outlet. And if it is 20 amp, then you are using a 20 amp outlet. Now, I know a lot of electricians are going to leave comments that, hey, you can actually use 15 amp outlets on a 20 amp breaker if there's multiple outlets. I understand. But to keep it simple for the DIYer, just go with whatever your breaker says. Make sure that it matches the amps on the actual outlet. And again, if you see this funny thing here, this means it's a 20 amp outlet. The 15 amp outlets, they typically look more like two vertical lines. By the way, any outlet that has a reset and a test is a GFCI outlet. That's the whole beauty of it, that you can test it to see if it's gonna trip and then you could reset that. Something important to point out is when these come out of the box, when you install them, you might think that it's not working because it likely won't work until you press the reset. So please do remember that. Now, when you test it, this should pop out and the outlet should not work until you reset it. If at some point you're testing and the reset is not popping out and you're not able to press it in to reset it, then that may mean that the GFC outlet has worn out over time and may need replacement if it's no longer tripping properly when tested. It's a good time to point out that you might have regular outlets in the house that just stopped working and you're like, what the heck is going on? And an easy fix might be just hitting the reset in a GCFI outlet nearby because it may actually be protecting that outlet if it was connected after the GFCI on the same circuit. This thing right here, and I'll show this to you later, is usually lit up green when it is working and installed correctly. Now, if you take a look here, you'll see that this GFCI outlet has a green light. These GFCI outlets test themselves around every 15 minutes to see that they're working properly. Again, if you ever wanted to, you can hit test and you will see that that light comes off. And then if you click reset, the light turns back on and is green, which is good. It means that it is working properly. By the way, take a look. These are two vertical lines. They don't have the T. That should tell you that this is a 15 amp and not a 20 amp. You'll also notice here that the reset and the test, you can see that if I flip this upside down, you can still read it properly, test and reset. Why is that? Well, it's very simple. It's because electricians love to argue with one another on the preference of doing it. Some electricians and safety experts will tell you that it's best to install this upside down, so with the ground pin up. The reason being that in the event that something metallic, like a loose plug or falling object, slips between the prongs of the plug and the outlet, it's likely to cause a short circuit. The object would hit the ground pin, which is the safest part of the connection, first, reducing the risk of an electrical hazard. Personally, I always install these outlets looking like this, like a type of face, two eyes and a nose. I keep it simple because that's how we're used to plugging in devices. If you're wondering what this part is, this is a self-grounding clip. Uh, it typically makes contact with metal electrical box when the outlet is actually mounted. If the metal box is mounted either through the wiring system or connected to a grounding conductor, the self-grounding clip allows the outlet to ground itself by the physical contact. So it's just an extra measure of safety. And by the way, since we're talking about the grounding part, please remember that if you are installing this, if you are DIYing the project, always make sure that you're connected connecting the ground first before you go ahead and connect the wires on the side. Can't explain to you how many times I see in tutorials and even 
actual electricians uh, not pointing this out or doing it incorrectly in videos. You always want to round first and then start connecting the other wires. And if this tutorial does well, I will cover all of that. I will show you how I replace GFCI outlets and we'll talk in depth about it. So let's now cover the back and the sides of the GFCI. So right away, you will notice that there is a line section. This is these two terminal screws here. And there is a load section that is actually covered by this label right here that says attention. The load terminals under this label are for feeding additional receptacles. Miswiring can leave this outlet without ground fault protection. Read instructions prior to wiring. What does this mean? Well, let's first cover line. Line, you will always need to connect at least the line. What is it? The line is where the incoming power from the circuit breaker or electrical panel connects to the GFCI outlet. It supplies power to the GFCI outlet itself. Remember, this is what we were covering in the example when I was saying that the hot wire is coming into the line. And by the way, if you connect the wires from the electrical panel to the line terminals on the GFCI, only that GFCI outlet will be protected against ground faults. It won't affect any other outlets connected downstream. And in electrical terms, downstream just refers to other outlets, devices, or equipment that's connected after the circuit from a specific point such as a GFCI outlet, like this one. So if I take this sticker off, you will actually see the load section, and there's a screw on this side as well. And the load is where, again, you can connect additional outlets or devices that will be protected by the same GFCI outlet. Sometimes you're gonna see that in a certain bathroom or laundry, the outlet is not GFCI, and you're gonna say, oh my God, it's not GFCI, it's not up to code. Whereas what you don't realize is there might be a GFCI that is protecting those other outlets downstream. So the load portion extends the GFCI protection to additional outlets or devices. I'll show that in a diagram soon. Here's something else extremely important that I want to point out. That is so important, so please pay attention. Remember how I told you that silver screws, and if you can't tell because of the lighting, but both of these are silver, this is typically the white wire, right? Neutral side. Now the hot terminal side, so the hot wires, they're typically brass or black, but you have to be extremely careful and not just say, okay, this was the hot side and this is the white wire side. You can't think that way, and I will explain why. The reason is, is you really have to take a look at the actual outlet. Here's a perfect example. Take a look at this outlet here that I recently replaced. If I flip it over, you will see that it's actually crisscrossed. So take a look at this. Hot. This is not hot. It's actually white. This is hot. So it goes hot, hot, white, white. It's crisscrossed. Whereas on this one, it goes hot, hot, white, white. It was also really interesting for me to see, and this is a really old outlet. Looks like it was assembled in Mexico a long time ago, probably 40 years ago. But you can see that this one, you can't really flip upside down because the test and reset, the labels are upside down. So it was actually meant for the ground pin to be at the top, which is actually so interesting. And when I say grounding pin, I'm referring to this guy right here. And then if we look at the outlet at the bottom, you will see that there is a grounding terminal. This is typically a green screw, and this is connection for bare copper or the green wire. Again, so that you are grounding this outlet. Here's a diagram that I wanna show you guys just to showcase that the GFCI's place in the circuit determines if it's gonna protect the other receptacles in the circuit. So right here, it's showing it that the service panel is connected to line A, right? And then there's a load connecting to line B on another outlet. 
and then you have the load connecting to line C on yet another outlet. And here it's saying that placing the GFCI in position A will also provide protection to the load side receptacles B and C. So if we install this in position A, everything downstream, so this and this will also be protected. However, if we place the GFCI in position C, and then these two are regular outlets, it will not provide protection to receptacles A or B. Remember that receptacles A, B, and C can be in different rooms. So it's not just something that has to work in one room. Again, I've had situations where a GFCI in one bathroom actually protects the outlet in another bathroom and a laundry room and stuff like that. So you always have to figure out what is everything that's connected on the circuit and then things will make a lot more sense to you. Now, something else I wanna cover and I'll cover this more in a video where I show exactly how I connect and replace GFCI outlets. But if you take a look here, this terminal screw, typically you can unscrew it and you can curl the wire around the screw and then tighten it. But another way of doing it is you actually have space here. You might not be able to see it, but you can actually stick the wire in here and then you tighten the screw. You just have to make sure that what you're tightening it on is the bare wire and not the sheathing around it. Again, I'll probably make other videos on this. I'm really into electrical engineering, but as you can see right here, it is nearly 2 a.m. right now and I really need to get to bed or else my brain will short circuit.